to episode 16 of OMG Craft. The is, it this, is this the first episode that I can't show on two hands? Is that right? One, one, six. Yeah, 16. Episode six. Anyway, how is it? Anyway, don't worry about it. My name is Chad Johnson. This is episode 16. And uh, I hope that you are ready to learn all things Minecraft related. We are going to get into enchanting this week. But first, before we uh, get into enchanting goodness, we have to cover news. And then after enchanting, we are going to cover my top three picks of the week. Number three might be interesting, and I'll tell you why when we get there. But first, let's start off the show with some news. Dang it. That didn't really work out so hot when I changed the transition right in the middle of the... Thing. Okay, let's try that one more time. We're still we're still learning on this thing that we call a TriCaster. And uh, let's take it to the news. This week, oh my... Oh, there's, still, there's still a creeper. Still a creeper in the system. Thanks. That is still, I don't know where... I don't know why that happened. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this week, there was almost not enough news to talk about. So much that we uh, have written in the doc that we're just going to talk about every time that the login servers went down, which is always a super bummer because uh, if you didn't know, Mojang has these things called login servers. And if they go down, you just can't get into your game. You can't get into a new server. If you're in a server while it goes down, uh, you can stay in the server. But if you try to relog or anything like that, can't get back in. It is a sad day, and that happened a few times this week. But we did get some updates right at the end of the day, and uh, the one that I like the most uh, is uh, fireworks. Yeah, that sound is gonna just keep on happening. Ah, it's pr it's pretty it's pretty not exactly what I want to have happen. Um, let's try this. Yeah, okay, cool. I think I got rid of the sound. Um, hey, look at this. This is fireworks. It looks like um, they are getting ready for the uh, the new year with some fireworks inside of Minecraft. What was said on Twitter was that uh, not only can height, uh, size, color, but also the shape of the firework can be crafted. So you should be able to to craft your own fireworks in whatever shape you want. We are not sure how that is going to be uh, su supplied. Um, uh, I don't know. People are writing stuff in doc chat, and it's just distracting the crap out of me. Um, so uh, fireworks are supposed to come by the end of the year. There should be an update right before the new year, so you can play with fireworks in your single player world. Probably servers won't be updated in time to take advantage of these fireworks, so you're gonna have to wait till next year to enjoy, uh, you know, having the new years off with some new fireworks. Next, you can, the, the this is all rumored by the way, these are not actually in the game, as you know, as we do with the news segment of the show. Next is enchantable books. So if you want to spend your levels on something, but you say maybe you haven't found diamond yet in your world, or um, you have all of your diamond stuff already, but you're just waiting for it to break and you don't really want to enchant a new one right now, you can enchant a book. The cool thing about this is that on servers with an economy, you can trade books around. Like say you get a book with, you know, Fire Aspect 5 and you're really excited about it. You know, you can trade that book and then um, it will, you can enchant your items with it inside of the new Anvil. So you can see here that the enchanting cost is fairly low at six uh, enchanting points to enchant this diamond sword with with a looting two enchantment. So that's exciting that you should be able to spend your enchantments, which we're gonna get to a little bit later on in the episode, on books and put them onto your craftable items. 
really neat. And also, Mojang uh, went ahead and announced the winners a, a while back. They had a a contest on Threadless to see which T-shirt design you you guys like the most. And so you could vote on them. You could submit ideas. I was trying to submit an idea. I got really got really lazy, and I I I, did, I was gonna do a uh, 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 argyle sort of shirt, but with the textures in kind of crisp doesn't matter because I didn't submit it at all. But you can now go on over to beta.threadless.com slash collections slash Minecraft and check out all of the Minecraft tees uh, and uh, go buy them for yourself. I uh, especially like this one, which has the Enderman in the rain uh, with a with a uh, umbrella because, of course... You know, Endermen. They don't like water so much, but gosh darn it, that is cute. And you will probably see me wearing that sh shirt on the show a little bit later. So that is it. That is the end of our news. Now let's get into the big discussion topic that we are going to cover for this show. And that is enchanting. Are you enchanted yet? We are going to cover enchanting in all of its glory. So first off, let me do a very large overview of what enchanting is. When you get levels in Minecraft, you can spin those levels at an enchanting table and enchant various pieces of the game. And I know that a lot of people have seen these enchantments, but I want to go into detail about everything about how much um how many how many xp points you get from different mobs um obviously recipes and and things like that so our producers who help make omg craft happen helped me out and created a world for us to play around in and I'm going to go ahead and jump into that world and show off a few of the things that happen uh, with enchanting. So let's take a look. First off, I wanted to show off how many experience points you get from the various amounts, uh, from the various mobs and, and ways to get enchanting um, in the game. So we've, we've created this sort of, this sort of graph here. Uh, we internally call it um, the the new the new Excel because you know you don't need Excel when you have these these nice you know big wool pillars. So uh, it kind of goes uh, off in the leftward direction with uh, the giant chart of XPness uh, powered by the uh, Blocksoft office Block, Blocksoft you know because Microsoft Blocksoft Blockso Soft. Microsoft blocks it. Anyway, um, first, let's start with the mobs. And uh, f these passive mobs, which are things like pigs and chickens and things, can give you anywhere from 1 to 3 XP experience points. Now, um, it's... Uh, First, let me go ahead and start off by saying that these XP points, whenever you get a point, that doesn't mean that that it goes directly to your level. That, that starts that little bar moving across the, the way. And so uh, you can, and, and each experience level you get, the amount that the experience point you get matters, it decreases with how much it, it matters. So you can see this graph that we've also uh, stolen from, from somewhere. It looks like uh, the Minecraft wiki. Um, you can see that up here in the beginning, uh, red is for XP required and the difference um, uh, in XP. So right here, the XP required is just about, um, it's at zero, or, or your first level, um, uh, just about exactly the same, and as you go up, the XP required gets much and much um, uh, higher um, as you gain experience. So as you would expect, the higher level you are, the harder it is to get to the next level. So I just wanted to point out that when I'm talking about the XP that you're going to be getting in the game, those are experience points, not experience levels. So let's jump right back in. Okay, so you get one to three from these passive mobs. From hostile mobs, except for blazes, uh, which are, of course, zombies and spiders and skeletons and stuff like that, you will get 
at least five, you will get five XP points. Now, blazes, you will get ten. So if you create a blaze farm, that tends to be uh, a little bit better than just the passive or the, um, the hostile mob farm. Now we have slimes and magma cubes. They are exactly the uh, same experience point if you come across a slime or a magma cube. And the large ones are worth 4 XP. The medium ones, are, or the small ones, are worth 2. And the tiny ones that you break and get those nice little slime balls from are just 1. Next, we have bosses. And the wither here, oh my gosh, look at how much experience you get just from the wither going up, up, up. There we are. We get 50 experience points from the wither. But uh, just to kind of show off uh, how much the ender dragon is... Um, we, we've kind of kept kept going up um, so far that we we actually reached the uh, the block limit so uh, you can see that uh, we've hit the block limit and and keep keep on going you know uh, eight thousand eight eighteen thousand more blocks eighteen thousand five hundred to be exact uh, more blocks up and um, that'll get you to where the uh, the ender dragon uh, arises so um we have a little bit of time before I hit the ground. Um, so if you are experience farming, um, that Ender Dragon might be the thing that you want to go for uh, when you're you know, trying to get experience. So next, uh, mining. In, when you are mining now, you can get experience points from these items. So uh, coal is worth uh, uh, zero to two. So you may get experience. You may not get any experience when you're, when you're mining coal. From diamond, you get um, at least three, up to seven. From emerald, it's the same thing. Three uh, is the minimum, and then up to seven. Lapis, you get minimum of two, up to five. And redstone ore is a minimum of one. You're definitely going to get one, but up to five as, as well. If you break a monster spawner, you'll get at least 15, up to 43. So pretty high up there. You could get quite a lot from a monster spawner. And then, uh, and that's all the, all of the uh, XP that you'll get from breaking a block. Next is smelting. So some of these items you might say, but iron's not in there. Well, yes, iron, you don't get any experience from breaking an iron block. That's because you have to smelt it to get your experience out of it. And this is based off of one entity in the smelter. So for diamond, uh, if you were to have diamond ore and then smelt the diamond ore, you would get 10, uh, or sorry, one experience point per, per diamond ore that you put in there. Same thing with emerald ore, gold ore, and then when you get to iron ore, it drops down to 0.7. So not as much as the other ones, but still, that's a, that's a pretty good amount. So if you have a stack of, of iron ore, you can get around... What is what is math? Uh, Fifty levels. I'm doing that quickly in my head. Um, so that's that's not too bad. Same thing with redstone. And with these ones, you would have to use a still silk touch pick to be able to get these to smelt. Which we are actually going to cover what silk touch means in uh, a little bit. You can also get experience from these foods. And wait, what is that? Didn't we just cover that one? Oh, no, we didn't because uh, that is the coal. So you also get some experience from these foods. All foods, when you bake them, you get 0.35. Uh, from clay, you get 0.3. From cactus, you get 0.2. From lapis, you get 0.2. From wood, you get 0.15. From coal, you get, which has to be obtained with a silk touch pick, you get 0.1. From the cobble to smooth stone, you get 0.1. And from uh, sand to glass, you get 0.1. There's also these bottles, which can be obtained by either having creative mode on or having an admin give them to you. You can't quite craft them yet. Um, they will give you at least three experience up to 11. So it tends to be that if you're in creative mode, you just kind of splash them on your face until, until you get up all the levels. Also, from breeding animals and catching fish, now you get experience point. This is kind of uh, new to, I believe it was 1.3, I forget, 1.4 maybe. Uh, this, is, this is fairly new, from breeding animals and catching fish. Now, let's say you've done all of this, especially that ender dragon, and you have some experience points to spend. How are you going to do that? Well, first you need a, a crafting table. So let's show off 
uh, how you would make that. To make a crafting table, sorry, a crafting table, LOL. I mean to say enchanting table. To make an enchanting table, you need a few things. You need obsidian, you need diamonds, and you need at least you need one book. So uh, obsidian and diamond can be found uh, throughout the world. Remember that when you try to get obsidian, you need a diamond pick to get it. So you will have at least had to have found diamond in your world to be able to craft a enchanting table. Now a book, let me show off how a book is made. First you need to get some sugar cane from uh, the side of a, a uh, coast. And then you make that into paper by using this recipe. Then you take this paper and you put it back into the crafting table. And then you take a piece of leather and you drop it in and then you'll get a book. Now this, this configuration can be in whatever it is. As long as there are three pieces of paper and one piece of leather, it will create a book. So that's how you create a book. You put the book at the top. This is now the recipe for the enchanting table. Uh, you put the diamonds here on the side uh, in the middle level, and then you put the obsidian in an upside-down T uh, with it on the bottom level and then also in the middle, middle level. And then you get this enchanting table. We're going to grab that. The other thing that you are going to use with an enchanting table is a bookcase. And we're going to get to this a little bit la later, but I want to show off how you make a bookcase. So you take your three books... You need three books to make a bookcase. Uh, drop them down in the middle slot. And then you take just any planks of wood and drop them on the top and the bottom. And that sort of makes a bookcase. And out of it, you get a bookshelf. Um, bookshelf, bookcase, same thing. Now, uh, what you would do with this enchanting table is you would go over and you have... I'm getting all these <laughs> dumb... Uh, uh, achievements. But anyway, uh, you would drop this enchanting table on the ground like we've done here, and then uh, you would right-click it, and you get your enchantment uh, sort of uh, screen UI, so to say. And when you drop in an item into this, you will see the levels that appear on the side. Let me actually go ahead and grab an item that is enchantable, like this shovel, and whoop, drop down here. And you get these enchanting levels. Now, let's say that you are, you've been out and about for a while. You haven't died in a long time. It's good to mention that when you die, you lose all but six levels. Um, and you have to go find your body to get those levels back. So let's say that you've been, uh, you know, out, out and about for a while. And you've gotten a few levels. And let's just, uh, I don't know, start with 1,000. Uh, that's how many levels I have there at the bottom. Um, it is also good to note that I am now in creative mode. So let me jump out of creative mode and get into game mode zero. Oops, I don't have access. Oh, no. I am permanently, permanently in game mode one. Well, I guess that's just going to happen. Normally, when you are in uh, the the... Uh, the game mode zero or normal player mode, there's going to be a green bar at the bottom that uh, that shows how far you are, how far along you are to the next level. Now, being at level 10,000 is really high. You will most likely never get there unless if you are cheating somehow. Um, so... Don't expect to have 10,000 levels to spend when you are in your own game. But for demonstration purposes, we have 10,000 levels to spend. And I go in here and I look, and I want to enchant this iron shovel like nobody's business. And I'm only seeing these really low-level enchantments. I want to get it higher. The highest enchantment level that you can attain is level 30. And how you do that is by dropping these bookcases along the enchanting table in this configuration of the glass, you, or the, the ice. You may have been wondering, why, why is there ice here? Well, it is because uh, this is the configuration that you can put the bookshelves in. So if I put a bookshelf down, you can actually see that there are these little characters that float from the bookshelf into the enchanting table, sort of giving the visualization that these books are causing this enchanting table to become more powerful. So if I throw down a few and I drop the shovel in again, you can see that now the levels that I'm able to get are much higher. I have now from 2 to 10. And if I try again, I get up to 12. So now let me throw down a few more books. And uh, let's check one more time. 
And this time I'm able to get up to 16. So the more books that you have down, the uh, higher that your level is going to increase that you can attain with an enchanting table. Now, the uh, amount of books that you could maximally put down is this many that I have right here. After this, you're not going to be able to get any more than 30 because 30 is the max in the game. So these bookcases are really all that I need, and I can just kind of get rid of all this other uh, uh, ice on the top of it. And and this is a, a perfectly acceptable amount of bookshelves to put next to an enchanting table. Now let me go ahead and grab all of the types of items that you can enchant in the game. And that is, let me read them off to you, the iron shovel, the iron pickaxe, the axe, the sword, the bow, some boots, some pants, some an, a chest plate, and a helmet. I'm also going to go ahead and grab some of this redstone, and this is to demonstrate um, a feature that when you click on the crafting table and you put something in it, a little uh, uh, fix if you, say, didn't get the max level that you wanted or you just need a different number level is if you click on something with a that is stackable like this redstone it can be anything that's stackable it could be feathers it could be it could be you know wood it could be anything you're going to get new levels and so this is kind of a pro tip that uh if you want to quickly you know swipe through pages and pages of levels you can do it rather fast here you can see how fast i'm going and um it'll help you uh jump through levels without without you know needing to normally what you need to do is pick it up and drop it down and that's that's usable, but I really like this uh, this stackable option. So let's go ahead and enchant each of these at the highest level that I have. So let's go 30, and let's drop that down. Let's drop that up 30, drop it down, drop it up. And then um, let's just see which levels I get. Um, I'm, okay, so these first tools I did at 30. These next ones I'm going to go in the middle just to kind of show that you're not going to get the best levels uh, if you are in the middle. Let's get seven, eleven, and uh, let's get the slow, you know, the low one. There you go. Okay, so the ones that I got, the, this first one was enchanted, I think, at level five. I got protection one. Mm, that's okay. Uh, projectile protection three, protection one, feather falling two, projectile protection two. That's pretty good. Um, I got a power one bow. I got a knockback two, a sharpness four, a fire aspect two, sword. Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 4, Fortune 3, uh, Axe. That's, pretty, that's really good. It'd be great for getting apples. Um, a Silk Touch 1, an Unbreaking 3. Wow, I got really good levels. And an Unbreaking 3, Efficiency 4 uh, on the Iron Shovel. So that's just uh, that's just kind of a demonstration of what it's going to look like to you when you do these enchantments. The other thing is, is when you throw these items on, uh, it is going to have this sort of enchanted glow to it that other pe players can see, and so do all your items. So you can see it in my hand, and it's sort of like waving all around, uh, being crazy and weird. Um, oops, I don't know what I just did. There we go. And let me do F5. There we are. And so you can also see that my armor sort of shimmers there. It's kind of it's fancy. I like it. I got shimmer and armor. And... Um, uh, Anyway, that's just what enchanted armor looks like with that really, really cool shimmer effect. So let me go ahead and take all this off. And then let me talk about what each of these enchantments mean. Um, and go back into the other mode. So right here we have Cheeto's uh, cheese, Cheesetastic Armory. It's now even more cheesier. Um, and you can see that we've sort of set up uh, a few of uh, these things. Um, First off uh, is protection. The protection enchantment will uh, protect um, the whole your whole being. So um, what I mean by that is if I jump back if I jump over to the next one, which is fire protection. Fire protection only protects you against fire. So you know, so protection is actually a more is a more lucrative. Uh, enchantment to get than just fire protection because protection is going to cover fire. It's also going to cover blast and projectile. These other ones uh, have projectile, blast, and um, fire. Um, and you can get up to level four when you are uh, enchanting those those armor pieces. It's good to point out that I believe that the max amount of 
arm of protection that you can have on all of your items is I think it's like up to seven. That is a big question mark at the end of that. I I cannot remember that off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, uh, so um, uh, and the other thing is that you can't combine protection um, levels. So if you tried to use a anvil to to add fire protection to your protection for whatever, it's just not going to work. You can really only have a few, you can really only have one type of protection on your um, enchantments. Now then, there are a few other types of enchantments that you can get on specific types of armor. And so on the helmet, it comes with two other types of enchantments. Respiration allows you to breathe longer underwater. So your little little air bubbles that you have on the side of your inventory will go down much, much, much slower if you have a respiration helmet on. The other thing that the helmet can do is give you aqua affinity. Aqua affinity allows you to move faster in water. So you can even have helmets that have aqua affinity and respiration to allow you to move faster and also breathe better underwater. Or at least, um, oh, it says... Protection level max in game is four, Cheeto is saying. What I'm talking about, and I could be incorrect, is that the amount of stackable protection units, like so if you have a protection four helmet and a protection three chest plate, or and then another protection four thing, you know, four, four, and three equal eleven, protection eleven. I don't believe it goes up to protection 11 on your armor. I believe it stops at a certain number. There is a cap for protection across all items. Yes, the count is about 8 to 10. T2 is confirming. Um, so just to let you know that if you have every single armor piece enchanted to protection 4, they may not stack up to get all of that protection. So if you have, you know, four on your boots, four on your pants, and four on your chest plate, that's 12. And you, you may actually not get protection 12 on your entire, on your entire body is what I'm trying to say. Okay, back to the other item that, uh, the other enchantments that you can get on items. And boots are the other thing that you can enchant with a different enchantment. And that is feather falling. Feather falling allows you to be able to hit the ground and not lose health when you have on feather falling boots. So uh, very, very useful if you're trying to go spelunking in caverns or tend to fall while you are creating big old constructions, that sort of thing. So now let's move on to the weapons. In the weapons, you have your basic uh, sharpness, you have smite, you have bane of arthropods, and you have knockback on the... Uh, let me start with the swords, then let me move to the tools, and then I'll end with the bows. So, um, uh, whoops, uh... Then we have fire aspect and uh, looting on the sword. So with the swords, sharpness gives you um, a, a boost on the amount of damage that you hit across all mobs, across villagers, across you know blazes, across everything. Sharpness is sort of like protection earlier in the armor where it helps just about everything. But then when you move over to smite, smite is good against the undead sorts of things like the zombies or the skeletons they uh, smite will not help you against say spiders or um slimes or things like that so then you move over to bane of arthropods and arthropods are spiders they have their you know that's what the scientific name for spiders are um and so bane of arthropods will work against cave spiders and normal uh spiders and then knockback will, uh, whenever you hit a, a mob or something that you're trying to kill, it'll actually push them back. And so this is really, really useful on creepers because if you have a knockback sword and you hit a creeper, he's going he's gonna to be knocked back away from you and it'll stop his countdown timer to explode. So if you're going into an area that you know is full of creepers, like say you're on a PV, 
uh, e-map or, you know, some sort of uh, super hostile map. And you know there's going to be tons and tons and tons of creepers. A knockback sword is nice to have with you. Next is fire aspect. What fire aspect does is when you hit them, it uh, has the chance to catch them on fire. Fire aspect isn't as useful against things that are normally on fire like blazes or or nether slimes or uh, I, don't, I don't think it works very well against ghasts because ghasts aren't hurt by fire that sort of thing and then finally with the swords you hit looting what looting allows you to do is uh, have an increased chance that the mob that you're fighting will drop one of the rare items in the game so with zombies that would be that would be the potatoes with uh, uh, zombie pigmen, it would be swords or the gold nugget. With the ghasts, it would be a gas tier. With the wither, it would be the wither star, that sort of thing. So looting will allow you to have the chance to get more of those items or just get those items in general. Next, let's move on to the tools. The things that the tools can have are efficiency, silk touch, unbreaking, and fortune. Let's start with efficiency. Efficiency is how fast the uh, the tool will go through the block that it is going against. So uh, an efficient shovel will shovel up dirt way faster than a non-efficient shovel. That can be uh, brought up to level 5 on uh, that. Next is Silk Touch. There is only one level of Silk Touch. It's Silk Touch 1. And Silk Touch allows you to grab a block in its native state. So what I mean by that is like when you pull up grass blocks, it gives you a dirt block back. When you, uh, when you mine out smooth stone, it gives you a cobblestone out of it because you have interacted with that block. So imagine Silk Touch as pulling that block out of the world without destroying it. So same thing with, with redstone. If you come up to redstone ore and you hit the redstone ore enough, you'll get redstone dust out of it. But with a Silk Touch pick, you'll just get the block. And I'm actually going to cover this one in a little bit. Next is unbreaking. It just means that the item will not break as fast. It will be more durable than another uh, item. And uh, that is useful, if you, especially if you have an enchanted item that you want to keep around for a while. And then uh, finally with the tools is fortune. Fortune will allow you to get more items out of a block. And we're going to cover fortune a little bit uh, more uh, later on. Next is the bows. With bows, you can have a few different enchantments. The first one being power, the next one being punch, the next one being flame, and the next one being infinity. Let me go through power. Power allows you to uh, deliver more damage uh, when you hit the, the player. So just think of it as a damage increase. Next is punch. Punch is like knockback in that if you hit them with it, they will fly back. Uh, if you hit them with your arrow, they will fly back from the hit. Next is flame. Sort of works like fire aspect. I sort of wonder why they didn't name these all the same, but maybe it's so you can say, hey, I have a flame enchantment, and you know that you're talking about a bow. Uh, flame works in a lot like fire aspect, where it will hurt mobs that mobs or players that are immune to fire, or not, not immune to fire, and it really won't do anything to mobs or players who are immune to fire or have a potion enchantment on themselves, which will make sure that they don't get hurt by fire. And finally is infinity. And infinity is really cool because it allows you to shoot as many arrows as you want without using any of them. It doesn't use up an arrow when uh, you get it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a few of these tools. Um, and I'm going to put back my tools that I don't really want to show off. I have a Fortune 3, a Silk Touch, a Infinity, and then I also wanted a Looting Sword. Let me grab this Looting Sword. And just show off kind of uh, what I mean by these. First, I'm going to uh, bring up Fortune. So let me make sure I have the right one. Here we go. Fortune, then we're going to do Silk Touch, then we're going to do Infinity, and then we're going to do Looting. So first is fortune. So these are a few of the blocks that you can use the fortune pick with. So you can see that as I get these coal, you can see that more is popping out. Now, of course, in the new game, uh, these 
entities get allocated together, so you can see them jump together if they're too close. But you can see that from those three blocks, I got eight pieces of coal, which is nice when I have a fortune pick. This also works with lapis. You can see all of the lapis. I got 60, I got 46 lapis from those three blocks. And of course, redstone. And where's, oh, I already had redstone. So um, I believe I had 32 before, which means that I just got 19 from um, the three blocks. And of course, diamonds and emeralds. So let's see. Whoa. I got really lucky on that first one. I got seven diamonds from those three blocks, and let's try this with emeralds. Emeralds, I have found, are a little bit less giving, and I only got five emeralds from those three blocks. Now, this doesn't work with absolutely everything. There's a few blocks that a, uh, that a fortune pick will not work on, and that would be glowstone, lapis blocks, um, anything that you can craft into a block, like say a iron block, uh, your a, a fortune pick isn't going to work with. And unfortunately, glowstone, when you break it, you get the glowstone, and then when you craft it into a glowstone block, you make glowstone again. So it would be really easy for someone with a fortune pick to cheat if glowstone gave you extra glowstone dust when you used a fortune pick. Same thing with the lapis block and things like that. So anything that you break that you're going to get the normal um, uh, amount of... Uh, anything that you can have a craftable item out of, you're, you won't be able to use uh, this pick with. Next, let's go to Silk Touch. Let me also um, get these out of the way so we can show off Silk Touch. Silk Touch, say with this glass blo uh, uh, grass block, now I get a grass block back. So you can see these two grass blocks in my inventory when I put down, I get grass. Normally when you break this grass block, you get a dirt block. And so that is what a silk touch pick does, is it will allow you to get the, the actual block back. Same thing with this coal. I will get the coal uh, ore block. Same thing with this smooth stone. You get the smooth stone block instead of the normal uh, cobblestone block. And this pick is really useful. I love it for the redstone because when you break redstone instead of getting four pieces of redstone you just get a single block and it keeps your inventory super super uh, clean and so what I tend to do is when I go out adventuring is I you just pick by the way I believe it works on melons yeah it works on melons see you get these melons back instead of the melon slices um, and what I like to do is I like to go around with a silk touch pick and I will mine with it, uh, especially things like redstone and, and coal ore, and then I'll take these items back and then I'll do this little number where I drop it back down and then I take my fortune pick and I break it so that I get extra items from the thing back when I'm back at home and have enough chests to deal with it. So that's kind of a nice little pro tip. Uh, I should be keeping these tips, but... Um, Oh, I'll give them to you. Next is the infinity bow. And to show this off, I need to go back and get my single arrow to show off that this bow is only going to use one arrow and never need another one. So uh, here we are uh, where I can shoot as many arrows as I want. And that one arrow that's in my inventory, I don't have any other arrows in the inventory. Um, it's just going to keep on firing. This is really, really, really useful uh, when, say, in a PvP or you want to kill a lot of things from far away. Now, next, I'm going to switch my game mode back to creative to show off that doo -doo -doo, this spawn zombie and throw a whole bunch of zombies on the ground. <laughs> I think T2 was doing me a favor, and he um, made this... Or, no, I don't think... Yeah, that's my fault right here. Here we go. Okay. These guys are, unfortunately... These are really loud neighbors. Um, so, that's no fun. But, once you spawn... And I've, I've created this little hut for them, but if they leave the hut, they, they catch on fire. 
So that's uh, that's no no big deal. Um, with a looting sword, yeah, yeah, looting, yeah. Uh, you will be able to get things out of these guys more often. Golly, they are loud. Let's just turn them off. Okay, cool. You can get um, more things out of these mobs. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's the idea behind a looting sword. You can even see that I'm getting way more. Oh, no. Oh, no, they've escaped. I'm getting way more um, uh, just meat out of these guys, the zombie meat out of them, than I normally would. Uh from just a normal sword. And unfortunately, uh, you probably shouldn't do this in creative because I've just, like, destroyed my map. And, uh, hey, guys, come on out. You know, it's it's fun in the sun. Don't you want to play with me out here in the sun? Well, okay, maybe not. And that is just about it for enchanting. I hope that you have enjoyed this long form tutorial about enchanting. So, uh, next thing that we're going to go on to is my favorite things. Uh, the, the best thing that we could possibly do uh, next. Uh, so, uh, I ha this week have scoured the internet in the minutes before the show to come up with the best things, I'm, I'm lying to you. I, I actually didn't do any of this. Um, T2 and, and Cheeto, the, the producers who helped me work on OMG Craft, have, have done just about um, uh, everything here. Uh, first, uh, I wanted to show off the RMCT3 semifinalist game. This is my first tip. It was such a good map, and you can check out the recording of it from Honey's point of view, of course. Honey is a good friend of the show. Um, it's a, There's a 45-minute video up on YouTube. You can head over to our show notes uh, at uh, goodoldomgcraft.net slash 16 if you want a link to this specific video. But uh, this is the semi-finalist game, and... Holy crap, was this a uh, good game. Um, so anyway, uh, if you are into the uh, to, um, PvP and uh, the RMCT stuff, I would really suggest checking out this game. Uh, it really uh, uh, shows off uh, how much fun <laughs> you can have uh, when watching a PvP game on Minecraft. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Out next, I have a Minecraft map uh, from good old map creator Maddie 400. I'm sure that all of you have heard of this person. Um, uh, that <laughs> this is a Predator, and it does uh, the the gameplay is similar to um, Predator in the movie. If you've or if you're old enough to have seen Predator the movie. They have a nice little trailer, which I will play for you now. Um, oh, that is loud. Um, so the idea is that one player is the Predator, and the other players are trying to survive the Predator and, uh, uh, I get, you know, just, just not not get killed by the predator uh, the cool thing about this is that it is pvp that it requires no mods to uh install on your server and it's just a heck of a lot of fun um so uh i would really suggest checking out this map um we can check out the, the uh, uh trailer a little bit longer if we want uh, by the way, the Predator is invisible, just like in the Predator game. Oh, there he is. He has an arrow stuck in him. Um, uh, so uh, expect to fight invisible foes if you are uh, playing uh, Predator. And just see how long you can survive in the game. Anyway, love, I love, love, love... Uh, this map and um, this PvP style of one versus all, all versus one. Uh, really, really cool. Are they hiding? Are they hiding in? That's awesome. Anyway, uh, that is Predator. Uh, let's check that out. And then, of course, we always, you know, do these top three picks. So um, this week we were a little bit, uh, uh, 
you know, a little bit thin on inspiration for picks. So um, instead of just choosing, you know, one one thing for the final third pick of the episode, we went ahead and decided to go for, gosh, uh, what is this? Um, uh, you know, uh, five things for the third pick. And uh, this was this was given to us by the producers of the show, and so you know that this is going to be really nicely vetted out. Um, and so I'll just you know just straight from the horse's mouth, you can see that our our, n- our third pick is uh, Dan Hendricks, the uh, the the IRC mod, um, you know, uh, which uh, known known to be arranged by Cheeto, known to. Um, angered by Cheeto. Uh, that, that's yeah. That, that we we do know that that Dan is very angered by Cheeto, and um, uh, yeah. But but of course we don't want to make him too mad. So the the fourth pick is Cheeto's cheese tacular armory, which you saw was even more cheesier earlier. Um, you can use the offer code OMG for fifteen uh, percent off your next order of ten ten em- emeralds or, or more. Um, you can go to uh, OMGcraft uh, dot com to to find um links to that now thing thing four um uh thanks thing four thing number thing five is actually thing four so thanks thing four just so so you know um and then thing six now on all of these things these extra things are thing three because we only do three 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 things at the end of the show um by the way if you are having a fun drinking game just every time i say the word thing just go ahead and drink um, from now. So, uh, thing six is Old John Smokey's uh, new Bandcamp album. Uh, so you can head right on over to oldjohnsmokey.bandcamp.com, and uh, the the newest album is Songs in the Key of D uh, C, uh, because uh, you know, and play, play a little bit of this. Yeah, it's it's rocking. You know, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's full of spoons. Old John Smokey, the the spoon uh, maestro. Uh, you've never heard spoons like this bef- before. In fact, I'm think I'm having a hard time talking over the spoons because it's so good. Um, so that's a good old Old John Smokey. Check out his new album on Bandcamp in the key, uh, songs in the key of D. C. Uh, last but not least is thing number seven, which I haven't. I, I they came up with thing number seven while the show was going on. So it looks like Cluster Chunk, Cluster, Cluster Chunk places two teams of up to four players um, on individual Cluster Chunks made from a mix of just about every block in the Minecraft library. Uh, win the game by destroying the other team's bed. Okay, so um, let me hope that there's some stuff that I can show off. Cluster chunk. Let's go ahead and play this uh, this this Minecraft video or the Minecraft video. This YouTube video. Minecraft makes videos now and they host them on their uh, you know server. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Okay, here's cluster chunk. We're gonna we're gonna experience this one together here. So everyone gets their own chunk made of a whole bunch of different blocks. Um, I defend the bed spawns. Okay. Supp- supply satellites. Okay, so I guess if you... Every block in the game. Okay, okay. I see pistons and, and ores. Timed hyper spawns. Looks like a very interesting gameplay mechanic. Um, blaze cannons, I guess, just screw up the opponents. So it looks like they're choosing teams now. Oh, okay, so this is team play. It's nice. They get dropped into their side of spawn. Oh. Okay, they have... Uh, they're fighting blaze. Why were they fighting? Why? Confused as to why you would go over to the blaze side. How many blocks do you have in your chunk? This looks like a resource game. You have to know. You have to know exactly how good. Why? Why would you do this? It looks like he's just killing himself. Oh wow! He's created a cannon to destroy the other person's chunk. 
And hopefully you destroy their bed so they can't respawn. Looks like there's a lot of blocks in your chunk. It's funny because I saw red wool and I was like, oh, he got the wool. He got the wool he needed. Anyway, this is Cluster Chunk. The object of the game is to destroy the other person's bed and then, of course, kill the other players. Um, uh oh, here comes a cluster. Uh, cluster cannon. That's not good. Okay, well, that is Cluster Chunk, uh, suggested by our producers of OMG Craft. Uh, Cheeto and T2T2. That is it for this episode of OMG Craft. If you would like links to any of the things that I talked about on this episode, head on over to omgcraft.com. You can go directly to this episode's show notes page by adding the episode number to the URL. So omgcraft.com slash 16 will bring you to this episode's show notes. Also, if you have something that you would like to suggest to me that I haven't covered yet or you would like to know or you're just having problems with, go ahead and send it over mail at omgcraft.com.net. Why does it say .net? It's not .net. It's .com. Truthfully, I screwed it up in the first episode so much, I went ahead and bought the other domain. But I'm pretty positive that I don't have the uh, the URL for the, the, the email address to .net. So let's just .net. It's .nacom uh, because I had spelled that wrong. One second. Meh, 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 meh. And there we go. Let's go ahead and close that. It's .net. It's .com. Why isn't that updating? There we go. Mail at omgcraft.com. Everything's better. The world's calm. All good. Huge thanks to the folks who make OMG Craft possible. That would be Cheeto. That would be Blender. That would be T2. That would be Bill Meeks. All of these people help make me uh, do the show. And then also huge thanks to Twit for allowing me to use their studio uh, here after hours. And uh, the staff has to put up with me doing my little Minecraft show. So uh, everyone, thank you everyone uh, for hanging around and watching this episode of OMG Craft. I will see you guys next week. nice graph was, was made by Blocks of Soft, but uh, Blocks of Soft can't be complete without, uh, you know, good old Clippy. Looks like you're uh, trying to play Minecraft. Well, you're correct, Clippy. I was trying to play Minecraft. How did you know? It's like you read my mind. Did you see my graph about Minecraft? That's pretty smart, Clippy. You're pretty smart, too.